Um, the first thing that we're going to do is set some preferences and this will make our life a lot easier in terms of finding our folders to both input our data and then also output data as well. So I'm going to go to File Preferences. Now up here you've got a list of things that you can change and basically this is just all things that is your individual preference about how the software is going to run. The only thing that we're really going to look at at the moment is these def the default directories tab here. So if we click on that, what you can see here is I've actually already set this to my working directory. You can do this in one of two ways. You can actually just type the address in there of a folder that you know. Or if you're not exactly sure where your working directory was, which is what I pointed out in, in Windows Explorer, simply click Choose and navigate to that folder. Okay, so for me that's where I'm going to go, CA and SES201. And I'll click OK on that. And then you do the same for the data directory, the temp directory and the output directory. Okay, so yours may not be exactly CA SES201, you might do C SES201 or however you like, it's up to you. So once you've done that, if you click OK, and it'll ask you if you'd like to save these preferences which of course you'd like to do, so you click yes on that one. Um, and then it's asking you where you'd like to save your preferences. Now if you're working on your home computer, you probably have access to all of your C drive, and so it's probably okay to save this, um, this preferences file in this particular location here. And you can have a look all the way along to see, uh, see what that file is called. Um, if you're working in the lab, however, you'll need to change that output file name to somewhere that's sitting in your working directory. So still call it the same, call it emvi.cfg for MV configuration file, um, but you'll probably need to change the location back to your working directory there. Okay, so for me that would be that location there. Okay, but I'm just going to keep it on, this, on the default for the moment. And we click OK. Um, it'll tell you that there's already one existing and would you like to override it, in which case we will because basically all we're doing is we're overriding the previously existing preferences. So we'll say yes to that. Okay, so we're ready to get started. So what we're going to do first of all is have a look at the multiband Landsat image that we, um, that we had a look at, at it in Windows Explorer to start with. So if we go up to File and then Open Image File, you can, you can see that MV has already defaulted to going to that working directory that I set in the preferences. And I'm going to double click on this particular folder here and just to click on the, the first Landsat image that you see up the top there and go open. Now what you first see is an available bands list which opens up as a new window um, on your desktop. So a few things just to note about this, what you'll see first of all is the name of the file at the top, so TM Darwin 171009. And there's an icon to the left of this, which first of all shows a little coloured image here, which is letting you know that it's a multi-band image. And it's also got the symbol for, uh, for raster being several layers stacked behind each other here. Then we've got a listing of the names of the different bands. Okay, so it says band 1. Band 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. So these are the multispectral image bands of the Landsat sensor. Now what you'll also see beside each band is a wavelength in, in micrometers. Okay, so this is, this is representing the center of the bandwidth. We'll go through this more in class, so it's not something to worry too much about. And you can also see that there's got some that there's some map information here also. So I can click on the little plus to the left of the map info, and it will give me information about the projection, the pixel size, the datum, and some coordinate information there also. Now the first thing that you should notice here is that these numbers are not necessarily sequential. So I've got band one, two, three, four, five, and there's no band six there, but there's a band seven. Band 6 is that thermal band, and we'll bring that in separately. Okay. Now the next thing you can see is when we decide to actually display our image, we can choose to display it as a grayscale image or an RGB color. What we're going to do first of all is just allow this the radio button on grayscale to remain ticked, and we're going to 
select our band one to start with as it's already highlighted here and then simply click load band now I'll just bring this into the display here and what happens now is we've got three new windows that open up okay so what these are called collectively is the display group okay and within the display group we have a scroll an image and a zoom window okay so the way it works in terms of navigating around is that within the scroll window you've got a small red box and that small red box represents what you'll then see in the image window within the image window you also have a small red box and that represents what you'll see in the zoom now at the moment this red box in the scroll window is sitting over an area that's all black so if I click anywhere within it and drag it somewhere in around say Darwin over here you'll now see that the image is displayed in the image window and then also this small area in the zoom window okay so this is this is a good start to try and get into some of the terminology here so we have a display group which consists of all three of them we have the scroll the image and the zoom okay and each is showing first of all the scroll shows the overview of your entire image then the image and the zoom show you different levels of zooms within that area now within the zoom window you can also see that there's a small plus and minus button and you can click on these to zoom in further or out further and you'll see as you do so the red box in the image window will also change size just to let you know exactly what you've zoomed in and out of now the idea here is to first of all just go through and get familiar with moving around your image so you can either do so by clicking and dragging your red box or you could just click your cursor anywhere else within the image okay and in any of the displays as well and things will change accordingly so have a look at different features we've got downtown Darwin here um, the university campus a little bit further north up here I can find it in there with Rapid Creek and Nightcliff around that area also um, you should be able to pick up the, the airport uh, fairly distinctive by the runway and a couple of other features there Okay, so have a have a go at moving around your image and getting familiar with how different features look. Then once you're comfortable with that, what I'd like you to do is to change over. First of all, we've got band one, which is what we've displayed here, and this is letting us know how blue light is reflected in the image. Change that to band two. So click on band two, and then go load band, and have a look at how different features are displayed. Work your way down. So go band three. Again, things are different. Band 4, the things are quite different again. So have a look at all of the different bands and how different features appear within those different bands.